afternoon, committee members. My name is Susan Burke, and I'm an attorney. Uh, I'm here representing the Maryland Association of Justice and asking that all of you vote in favor of this extension of the statute of limitations. Uh, at present, Maryland lags behind the rest of the nation. We are not where we should be as a state. Uh, I provided a graph, a colorful graph that had been done by Cardoza Law, and you'll see that we're on the, we're on the wrong side of the scale on this one. We don't even have a statute as long as our neighboring state of Virginia. Uh, despite the repeated legislative efforts, it has not been extended. Yet when you look at the courage, the courage, and you cannot help but say thank you to all three of you who have the courage to come and share your personal stories. Um, I applaud your courage, and I'm honored to be beside you. Um, it's beyond dispute that the injuries inflicted by pedophiles are, they last forever. It is also beyond dispute that victims don't recover quickly. They cannot speak up quickly. In order for them to have the time they need to recover and to put together the type of support systems that are needed to endure the re-traumatization that occurs by telling their stories in public. That is not, it's not easy to fight for justice. It's not easy to bring forward nightmares. And so in order for them to create the support structures that even give them the ability to reach up and pick up the phone and call a lawyer and say, hey, listen, can we bring suit? Can we go against the evangelical church that conspired to hide pedophilia in its ranks? Can we move forward? That takes a long time to get up the courage to do that. Seven years is just too short. And what I would highly recommend to all of you who care about people, who care about the citizens of this state, take a look at the book by Shepherd Pratt psychologist Joanna Silberg. It's well documented, well researched, and it will help you understand why a lengthy statute of limitations is really needed here. The repression of memories is well established. It's been accepted in the scientific literature. It's been accepted in the courts. In neighboring jurisdictions, they use triggering dates of the recovery of memories to trigger the statute of limitations. Uh, in addition, most of the states that have looked at this and have studied this, and you see, and you see on the graph, they're moving in the direction of extending the statute of limitations. We have an unnecessarily short term limit. I'm personally familiar with the negative effects because a group of victims came to me. Uh, they had been molested as children in the context of a, a fundamentalist uh, evangelical church that is headquartered here in Maryland, or was headquartered here in Maryland. We brought suit after obtaining the evidence from all of them. The reality of this particular church setting was that they believed that there should be no secular accountability. Rather, it was something that needed to be done internal to the church. It needed to involve merely forgiveness. The result of this philosophical approach to their victims was that a daughter, abused by her father, was locked in her bedroom every night by her mother because the church pastor told her that that was the godly thing to do and that she needed to focus on being a better wife and she should protect her daughter from the pedophile by merely locking her in the room. Now this is the type of conduct that as a society we should penalize. We obviously, this same conduct in the same church setting was brought to criminal prosecution, which does not have a statute of limitations, and one of the pedophiles was convicted of 40 years, as you heard from the delegate earlier. There is no reason why the courthouse doors should be slammed shut on these victims. It, it, this is a long overdue legislative reform. There is no reason not to do this. There, as the delegate mentioned, there's already plenty of protections in our judicial system to assist the defendants in warding off lawsuits. So I urge all of you to really seriously consider this issue. Seriously consider what message you are sending by refusing to extend the statute of limitations given that the science is so clear that time is needed for recovery. Thank you all. Uh, Ms. Burke, thank you. 
you you're, uh, certainly understand that concern, having been both a defense and plaintiff's lawyer throughout my career. What I would tell you in the cases of, the, of pedophiles and the abuse of children is that you are almost by definition in this realm where you're essentially in a situation in which there are no witnesses and you are dealing with credibility determinations. You're dealing with a, a person coming forward saying they were victimized you're dealing with the accused saying, no, I'm being falsely accused. Whether that happens at year seven or whether that happens at year 20, you're basically dealing with the same quantum of evidence. So the additional passage of time, I do not think degrades the evidence in any way. The plaintiff, as the party bearing the burden of proof, will have that same difficulty that they have now in trying to find corroborating evidence of something that happens behind closed doors. So I understand your concern, but if you really think long and hard about the difference in seven years and the difference in 20, you're not looking at a substantially different quantum of evidence. Even for instance, in thinking of it you know, as a defense lawyer for institutions, um, you are, in a sense, in the same posture. An institution is going to be able to bring their resources to bear to investigate. They may be the best position to defend better than the individual because they will be able to interview other people, obtain any factual information. So I think, if anything, it, it, the passage of time almost tilts towards the defense um, as opposed to the other way around. Um, and so I, I certainly think that these are the type of things that our system is already well equipped for, and the extension won't change that at all. So in a case where a 20-year extension, the abuse occurred perhaps when the individual, the plaintiff, um, was a young child, and fast forward 20 years, the abuser is dead. Um, that's sort of another piece. You know, if the abuser is no longer here, you know, if there's an institution, you're right, maybe they can gather some facts. Um, but you know, I, like I said, so I, I just think as painful as all of this is, there are from a legal perspective balancing things that do concern me. Like I said, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying I have concerns. Well, and, and on that, what I would suggest is that our system, our civil system is well equipped to balance those equities. And at the end of the day, what you're dealing with on the civil side is not what you're dealing with on the criminal side, which is the potential loss of liberty to someone who may be innocent. On the civil side, the worst case scenario is that an institution had not put in place proper procedures and thus was not able to make a good showing in court and has to pay some amount of money to someone who has been traumatized. So when you look at the, the, you know, the, the scale of the horribles, denying victims of pedophiles this ability to access the courts as opposed to what I think is an unlikely scenario. Uh, and I understand, you know, on the defense side, there's reputational interest. The mere, the mere bringing of the lawsuit creates a reputational harm. But that happens whether it's seven years or 20 years. And I do not think that the pain and the suffering of the victims should be weighed against just a mere reputational injury. I think we have to step back and say, science has taught us these victims need time to recover. Our legal system has to reflect the best evidence out there, and the best evidence out there is that more time is needed. 